So continuing on our double whammy of Duel Links news videos today, we have the upcoming updates. Now, usually Konami kind of wait until after Christmas to do this, but this time they decided before Christmas. And of course, I've had what we're kind of getting in terms of the events, right? The, the big event spoiled, right? So I know that going in. I don't know the cards yet, so that's going to be kind of fresh, but let's go in to uh, to the, uh, the Duel Links updates for January. Of course, with our first thing, the 5th Anniversary Campaign, which they're highlighting, we're getting Monster Reborn, and it's limited to 1. So if you don't know what um, what Monster Reborn does, it um, it summons a monster back from the graveyard. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. You know, going to Limit 1, I think it's the right idea. I think that's a very good thing they're doing, and kind of sets a very nice precedent going forward, that they can bring in these very powerful, very iconic uh, DM staples, right, as Seaman would call them. And they can limit them off the bat and make it so that we can have a bit of fun with the more anime side of Duel Links, of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and, you know, you like, essentially they become legend cards from Rush Duel, right? Which is fine. Of course, we're getting uh, Dream Tickets, we're getting the Structure Deck, we're getting a Selection Box, Copium Magician's Apprentice Illusion is going to be in the Selection Box. It sucks, but I think that's where she's going to be. Then, moving on to the next thing is the Mission Circuit which we're getting no confirmed cards, okay, whatever, I think they might have leaked, but I don't want to say anything until, uh, like, it's actually confirmed, right? Then, we're getting Deccan Arkaba, with a brand new skill. Now, we do actually have those cards leaked, uh, which to me implies that we're actually not getting a maintenance until the 5th anniversary campaign starts, which means we're not getting any maintenance until January the 12th or the 11th, around that kind of time, so, with our first card being Triple D King Leonidas, so, this is a card focused around effect damage and not taking the effect damage. So it's penned effect. When you do take effect damage, you can destroy this card. And if you do, it becomes an Orca King Dark, making it so that any effect damage you would take as damage becomes life point gain, which is fine. It does do it for your opponent as well, but you're not really burning in DDD, so that doesn't really matter to your opponent. Or it's monster effect. When you do take effect damage, you can special summon this card from your hand. If you do, gain life point to the damage you've taken, and then, from this card on, you know, as long as the card's on the field, you then take no effect damage. So, this is, of course, is very good for your um, your Dark Contract, right? I'm pretty sure Dark Contract, uh, if we go and have a look, they do take damage. They aren't a pay. They're straight up taking damage. So, if we have a look at, like, the Fusion one, this one is take a K. This one is take a K. So, this does work. <laughs> this does work to remove that, um, that damage taking without having to play Orca King Dark, which might make the pinned build even better. Just by nature of summoning this, it's a level 7, it's very easy to get the scales for, very very cool. Then, we have Double D Cerberus, which I think we have, we have like a, another one already that's very similar to this, but it's a level 4, once per turn you attack one DD monster you control, make it level 4, and if you do, it gains 4 attack and defense, which is fine for making some rank 4 exceases, but beyond that, I don't think it's all that great. And when this card is Pendulum Summoned, you can type one continuous upon your graveyard, as your hand, of course, getting back your Dark Contracts, then getting a Surge or a Fusion off, it's fine. I, I think the better, I, I think Rebel King Leonidas is way, way better, and we'll see more play, but this isn't terrible either, and DDD is already, with the, uh, the mini box, right, of course the structure deck does make them a bit pay to win, but they are technically... If you didn't touch the mini box, a somewhat free to play deck. So, uh, very, very cool. Moving back to Duel Links. We then have scrolling down the Tag Duel Tournament to get the new UR card, Red Carpet, and SR card, Comics Hero King Arthur. I have never heard of any of those cards before in my life, so uh, let's take a look. So, Comics King Arthur is a level 4 Warrior Xyz, level 4 rank 4 Warrior Xyz, requires 2 level 4 Warriors. And if this card is by battle, you can detach one from this card instead. Okay, has protection. And if you do, it gains final attack points. If it does, it burns for 250. That's not all that great, but I guess having double protection isn't terrible. But it is only by battle. So you can see why it's a free-to-play card <laughs> and not something that would be in a box. Because having card destruction protection would have been way better. So I think it's fine. This might be okay for raid duels, in a way. Uh, this might not be too terrible for those events. Then, we have Red Carpet. If a Dragger-type Synchro Monster is on the field, 
target up to two resonators in your graveyard and special summon them. Of course, support for Red Nova Dragon, the big one. We're getting the uh, the five Ds event today. We're getting some sleeves and playmat for it, a brand new skill. They seem to be going all in on Red Dragon Archfiend. So, <laughs> could we, could we potentially see Scarlight in the in the selection box? Copium? I, I'd hope not. <laughs> I really hope not. But y you never know with Konami what they're gonna do. Moving on to Tour Guide's Mission Bingo again. We just had that, and now we're getting it back again with the SR card Power Zone. So this is a spell card that is an anime card, it's a tag force card basically. It's a field spell. If a monster is destroyed by battle, the control of the equipped monster takes damage equal to half its original attack points. Okay. That's kind of terrible. I, I wonder if there's a deck you could cheese this in, right? If there's a deck where you can force your opponent to summon a bunch of monsters and then it's just win more, right? It's just win more, but it also hurts you, so I don't... You know, why am I thinking too hard about it? It's a, it's a tag force card, it's a free event card, whatever. Then we get to the good stuff. Uh, of course, the game, Supreme King Jaden finally coming to the game, which is uh, very, very nice. And to continue on the dark theme, we're getting Yuto in Duel Links. And apart from that, we're getting the mission research and improvements to the mission display. Which I guess is fine, but we're getting Yuto. Which, if you don't know who Yuto is, Yuto is the uh, the Phantom Knight Xyz user. He uh, he plays with Dark Rebellion, right? So the mini box, probably in January, will be Dark Rebellion themed and you can get that. Now, Copium, they put Apprentice Magician in that mini box rather than selection box, so I don't have to spend money, but given we've, you know, we've seen some rarity changes, right? For this, for, for Stellar Knights, I think the box being Phantom Knights and Stellar Knights kind of makes sense, so that's kind of probably what we're going to be seeing in the mini box, but we do have two brand new cards with the Phantom Knight Sword, not, not Break Sword, not the broken one, but this one isn't actually that bad, so you can activate it, start the card in control, it gains under attack points, and if we draw a battle of a card effect, you can pop this card instead. So it's a very, it's kind of like one of the OG Union cards, right? It's not all that amazing, but when it's the field, destroy this card, and you can banish this card from your graveyard to special summon a Phantom Knight in your graveyard, but banishing when it's the field. So it is a extender card. When you do put some PKs in the graveyard, which they do like going to the graveyard, so that is a very good thing. It just depends on how good it's going to be, but I think... I think the good thing here is we're getting PKs and they're rank four. We just got, or we're getting the um, the Evil Swarm in the box, the rank four is Book of Moon. So it's all working to kind of sell this uh, this mechanic and this deck. So the Phantom Knights of Fragile Armor. If a face of Phantom Knights, you control show by battle by card effect, especially this card from hand. Okay. You can banish this card from your graveyard, send one Phantom Knights card in your hand's graveyard to draw one card. This ain't all that. I don't I don't think I've seen this card see play at all, but PKs and door links might go down the route of being a more rank 4 deck at the start, and then they slowly introduce things like rank up XC's evolution, and you get all into that shenanigans. So I thought this would happen, right? I thought we'd have Yuto in January. I think people were kind of on a lot of copium for Sora, but with Yuto in January, and um, what's her name? And uh what is her name? Um Anna. Right, Anna in February, and then potentially going to Sora as our next character. I think that's a very good kind of stretch for Door Links to kind of start off with in 2022. Especially because Phantom Knights are so good <laughs> as a deck, and they are a deck like Galaxy Eyes that will get more and more support as we go through the next year, two years, three years of Door Links. So yeah. That is, uh, that is January's upcoming updates all kind of done. N nothing too overly insane, right? You know, the, the big highlight, of course, is going to be the anniversary. And we know we're getting more Master Door news in January. Which, you know, m might take away from, from this month for some people. If they do, you know, somehow announce a release date. And it's sometime in January, if not early February. This might take away from Dawn's for some people. But January so far, is looking to be pretty darn good, especially with the brand new box, and of course, the uh, Yuto coming, which uh, should be very, very fun, and selection box, which we all know will scam everyone, um, and especially if I'm trying to get three apprentice, 
that means a lot of money being spent. So, yeah. Anyway, that's me done. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next Duel Links video. See you then.